Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. In this video, we're going to look at how to use a Keras Convolution Neural Network to use a generator to generate data for it. So you can take the images that you have, rotate them, that sort of thing, to create additional training data. But the labels are going to be for regression. So we're trying to come up with numbers for each of these images. In this case, we're using a data set that I gave my students where you're trying to count the number of paper clips that are sitting on a piece of college rule paper. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. So now let's see how to actually do a regression with a generator. We're going to use my paper clips images data set that I showed you how to create in a previous video. Now this is a data set that I've generated. Basically, it's just a bunch of images of paper clips on top of paper, and you're supposed to count the paper clips. The paper clips are rotated at different directions, they're at different sizes, so it shouldn't be too hard for a convolution neural network to look at the edges of it and come up with at least a decent approximation. I use this as a assignment for my students, and some of them came up with some really accurate paper clip counting algorithms. So let's go to the kernels, and I have the paperclip starter code. This is what I'm going to demonstrate. Now this is a Kaggle notebook, so this means you can actually run it. I suggest you using the GPU that Kaggle gives you. You get, I think it's currently 30 hours of GPU usage. This will use just a fraction of one hour. And this shows you how to generate code that gets about a 2.3 RMSE. So it's, it's correct, usually plus or minus two and a half paper clips. And you may think, what's a half paper clip? Well, it's it's estimating at how many paper clips it sees. So if it if it's not too sure, if it thinks it's two or it thinks it's three, if it's really not sure between two or three paper clips, it'll be 2.5. If it's a little more sure that it's three than it is two, maybe it'll guess 2.7 paper clips. Okay, so the first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and edit this too so that I can actually run it from Kaggle using Kaggle resources. This is a lot like Google Colab that I normally use, but there's, there's some nuances to running code in Kaggle that I'll cover as I go through the starter code. All right, when it first comes up, this data set that you're linked to, so you're linked to the yeah, if you go to the data, you'll see the input is count the paper clips. That's a data set that I created. You've got the actual paper clips, and then you've got the test and train. So what I'm really showing you how to do in this video is you've got a train data set that has certain features that you want in it, and also the why. How do you tie these two together? Because the images, they're just all in a bunch of, they're in one folder, with 25,000 images. So great, how do you tie the regression numbers to that, to the Y? Now for classification, you do something different. You would create several folders here that were what each image is, and you would put each image into the corresponding folder, like one would be cats, one would be dogs, one would be elephants, and what folder it is in becomes your Y. But here I've got this code. I am going to run this doesn't take long to run. What this does is it reads the data frame from the Kaggle input. So since I told Kaggle that I wanted the input from that data set, Kaggle automatically puts that into that input directory. And believe me, if you're doing a kernels only competition in Kaggle, you're gonna be doing this left and right. This is how you would have to compete. So we read in the training data set this is very important. I have to put a file name in here, and this file name has to correspond to these. So the ID is what has that number, and that ID becomes very important to create the linkage because the CSV also has the ID which specifies how many paper clips it has. So the file name is clips hyphen, so see clips hyphen, the ID number dot PNG. And make sure to convert your integer to a string. Python is very picky about sometimes not doing the autocast for you. So I ran that. Now I am going to break the data up. I am going to use 90% of this for training and the rest I'm going to use for validation. So I have to come up with a training cut point. Probably should shuffle this data first, but I generated the data. I know it's shuffled, but that being said, you should still, I'm just being lazy. Shuffle it to be absolutely sure. 
but I promise you it's, it's shuffled already. So we'll run that code there and it tells you the two sizes. If you wanna just look at the training data too, you can see it's the IDs, the clip count, and that file name that I generated. So now we're going to create the data generators and this is where the magic happens. I didn't find a lot of examples on this. I found a few Stack Overflow postings and that's largely where I learned to do this. But you have to give it an images directory and this is where Kaggle mapped that data set to and then uncompressed those all for you. And that images dir, you're going to specify it down here. But let's get to creating the image generator first. First of all, we're going to normalize, rescale all those images, the RGB values, to 1 255th. So that causes them to be, instead of being in the range 0 to 255, they're going to be in the range 0 to 1. That helps the neural network. We are going to horizontally flip, but we are going to vertically flip. And that causes us to get additional images. The training generator, we are going to then flow from data frame. There's also flow from disk or flow from directory, I can't remember, but that's the other one that you use when you're doing classification. Flow from data frame lets you bring elements from that data frame in, and that's exactly what we need to do right now. We're gonna use the data frame of test. The directory is going to be the images. X and Y columns, the X column is file name. The Y column is clip count. Now, sometimes in image generation, you may have engineered features beyond just the images that you want to pull in as well. So you may have additional Xs. If you're doing that, that gets a little trickier. You almost have to do a custom generator at least at this point. The generators may advance to support that better or somebody knows how to do that truly inside of the generator, let me know. Um, but I have done that before with a custom generator. If anybody is interested in seeing a video on that, custom generators, definitely let me know. Target size is going to be 256 by 256, which is exactly the size that I generated those as. So we're not doing any scaling whatsoever. The batch size is going to be 32 images at a time. You might get better results shrinking that a bit. That's a bit big of a batch size, but it's what I have. The classification mode is other because we're not doing classification. We just want that wide to pass straight through. We have to do a similar thing for the validation images, and here we're creating a image generator in the same way, but for the validation ones, we don't want to flip them and do other things like that because now they're not real anymore for the validation set. The validation set, we want to be real, but we do the same thing. The clip count and the file name is where it's coming from. Classification mode is also other. Okay, this is running, it takes a moment. And you'll see that it found 18,000 validated images, 2,000 validated images. So those are the two generators. Now the question I guarantee people will be asking me about in the comments because my students ask me about as well. It'll give an error and it'll say not able to find these images. And I'll even show you how to why that happens. So say I mess up the directory. Now it's clips two and let's run it. Found zero validated images. If you see this, your path is wrong. Almost always is what causes it. or your images are corrupted or something bad or your file name doesn't correspond to what the actual images are check your file name check your paths if you got zero and zero here common error that seems to plague a lot of people now we're going to construct the neural network and actually fit it so let me go ahead and run this this is a part where TensorFlow seems to be a little bit in flux with Keras and how it's it's doing things. Here I just generate a fairly simple convolution neural network. Not too much here out of the ordinary. I have the convolution layers and the max pooling layers. And since it is regression, we are having one final output neuron and we're also using mean square error as the optimization function. I use Atom, seems to work well enough. I'm going to use early stopping to stop. Now, in older versions of Keras, you would do fit generator. If you do fit generator now, it starts to give you a warning. You can pass the training generator right into fit. That's perfectly fine. The newer versions of TensorFlow Keras seem to require you to actually put these values in so that you specify how many steps that you want in an epoch or it goes on forever. You'll never finish your first epoch. You can see I am training this here and it is going through the epochs. Now epoch doesn't necessarily have to be the size of a entire set of training data. The epoch can really be whatever size you want. It's an arbitrary length to just say that this is when you want to 
recalculate the validation set. Now this is going quite fast. This would be going an order of magnitude slower if you were using the CPU, so make sure you do that. Each of these numbers here that's being incremented, those are steps, so those are epochs. And it'll hit it here, it pauses when it hits it at the end because that's when it has to do the validation check. And then after it's, after it's done with that, it's going to go on to the next epoch. And I have 25 of them, but I also have early stopping. You see it made it to the, to the next one there. It reports the validation loss. So about plus or minus 43 paper clips, which is not good at all, but that improves as it continues. So this shows you how to use a generator and you are able now to do the rotations and all this kind of things with regression. There's a lot of examples of how to do this with classification. I may create one of those on my own at some point or uh, just so that it's consistent with my other videos, but this is definitely how you do this with regression. I also want to show you how to generate the Kaggle submission file because this is how you use a generator for prediction, which I haven't also seen a whole lot of examples for. But here what I'm doing is I'm using the test CSV, I'm reading it in, I'm generating the file name just like I did up there, same image generator here. We're not going to do flips and other things like this because this is how you generate the submission file to Kaggle. And you you want it to line up one to one. You don't want to be creative with the data and create additional images that are rotated and other things like that. So we create just a basic flow from data frame. Shuffle is false. This is critical. If you don't do shuffle is false, it's going to shuffle them, which is a great thing, but your IDs will no longer line up. If you're trying to score these to send into Kaggle, you want image number one for you to be the same as image one for Kaggle. So if you, if you don't do that, then you're going to get a different uh, one of these each time that you, that you train it. This is also important. This is about an hour of debugging time for me the first time I learn it. Even though you say shuffle equals false, it's, it's not going to rewind, so to speak. Like, I'm a child of the 80s, we had VCRs, you had to rewind them. So I don't think there's hardly anything you rewind these days, but it just means taking it back to the beginning of the, of the data set. So, if you ran this just one time, you don't need the reset, but if you're debugging or running this multiple times, it'll make you insane and you'll wonder why are my IDs not, not lining up? Because then when I go down here to generate my submission data set, PD data frame ID, the IDs here that you're putting in have to match these clip counts that you have predicted. Now another question my students asked me, a couple of them did, is is it okay that we're predicting like 1.3 paper clips or 25.4? Yeah, that's the uncertainty. The neural network is not exactly sure how many paper clips you're having there, so it's handling that uncertainty by giving a fractional guess. Then we write the CSV out to the working file in, in Kaggle. Now, if you want to download the submit, this is another kind of pain with Kaggle. You would have to actually click save version and then you can actually get to the file. Otherwise, this file is inside a Kaggle and very difficult to get out. So you just, you just have to save a version. You've not necessarily shared it with the world. If you haven't shared it, then it's your own version. And believe me, if you're competing in Kaggle, unless you're competing in kernels, you probably don't want to share if you're high up in the leaderboard ranks. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this interesting, please give me a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.